developed domestically by Ukraine's defense firms, by the end of 2000s the BTR-4 finally entered limited production. It was not only a departure from the Soviet-based BTR-94, a previous Ukrainian effort at producing an armored personnel carrier, but also a way to upkeep domestic armored vehicle production. So just what is the BTR-4 like? How does it compare to staples of other countries' light armored vehicles, like the US Striker or the Russian BTR-82? This video will shed some light on it all. Modern fighting vehicles need to be networked securely. While the military has their networks, us civilians can benefit from virtual private networks. This video is sponsored by NordVPN and they are offering just that. When you connect to the internet, be it via your mobile device or using your computer, NordVPN app will encrypt your data to the internet. Not only do you become anonymous, but your connection will go through one of 5400 specialized servers in 60 countries. You get to choose the server, near you for better speed or a faraway one if geolocked content is important to you. It's easy to use and there's even the auto-connect option for zero-click protection. NordVPN is available on every major platform – Windows, Android, iOS, macOS, Linux and even Android TV. NordVPN is giving Binkov viewers a special offer. Go to nordvpn.com slash Binkov or click the link below the video. You'll get a two-year plan plus an additional month with a huge discount. It's all risk-free, with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. BTR-4 may look somewhat similar to the older BTR vehicles, all stemming from Soviet designs, but it actually departs from those in many ways. It really is a mostly new design. The biggest difference, of course, is engine placement, which influences the overall layout of the vehicle. In old BTRs, as well as in still-in-production Russian BTR-82, the vehicle has the driver in the front, followed by the section for the gunner and squad commander, which in turn was followed by the mid-placed section for the troops. The engine is placed way in the back. BTR-4 has the driver and commander up front, then the engine section, and the rear half of the vehicle is the troop seating section. US Striker, for example, has the driver up front on one side, while the engine sits alongside it, longitudinally. Then comes the commander and then the section where troops are seated. That layout is the most widespread out there, with even the future Russian APC like the Boomerang vehicle choosing it. Ukraine's BTR-4 layout is sort of a compromise layout. The troops can still disembark at the back, somewhat protected by the vehicle, and the whole rear section can more easily be configured for other roles, other than troop carrier. Since it was designed for the needs of the Ukraine's army and not just for export, BTR-4 offers a fairly large number of variants. Indeed, unlike the Russian BTR vehicles, which are predominantly troop carriers, BTR-4 was the only platform available to Ukraine, produced domestically, to cover a wide variety of needs. It offers a simple APC, an infantry fighting vehicle and a whole set of other variants, like the repair and recovery variant, a command vehicle or an armored medical variant. The base platform for all variants is the same. It features four axles and all-wheel drive for its eight wheels, just like US Striker or Russian BTR-82. Its base APC variant weighs 17 tons, slightly more than its US or Russian counterparts. Important to note, Russian BTR-82 is the only variant here that already includes a medium caliber gun turret. The higher BTR-4 weight is offset by a more powerful engine. While foreign-made engines are an option, most BTR-4s have Ukrainian-made diesel engines. Due to the available power, the weight-to-power ratio is quite good, making the vehicle more agile. Perhaps that mid-vehicle engine placement has some benefits as well, allowing for lots of space and good weight distribution, even for a large and heavy engine. Protection-wise, all the vehicles mentioned here are fairly basic and aren't really meant to be exposed to heavy enemy fire, though the BTR-4, having ample reserve of power, handles additional armor better. Basic 17-ton BTR-4 offers all-around protection against 7.6mm armored piercing rounds, basically what an average infantry squad might use against the vehicle. The front of the vehicle is protected against 12.7mm machine gun rounds. That would be a platoon level weapon for the opposing side's infantry. The US Striker is allegedly somewhat better there, as in addition to all around 7.6mm protection, its frontal arc can withstand 14.5mm caliber, which is also sometimes used by countries within the ex-Soviet sphere. 
In practice, the bigger caliber usually means the heavier gun may penetrate from slightly longer distances. The Russian BTR-82 has roughly similar armor protection levels to the BTR-4, and neither has a V-shaped hull bottom, unlike the ICV Striker variant, so going over a light mine might cause greater casualties to BTR-4 occupants. Curiously, BTR-4 designers opted for large armored glass windows, which give great visibility, but require the armored shutter panels to be placed over them if the enemy threat is high. Side windows still remain uncovered though, and the vehicle is driven using a periscope module in that configuration, though that module needs to be installed as an addition. A Russian BTR uses a more complex built-in set of periscopes. It also has the option of removing front window armored covers, though there is no armored glass beneath them. And when out of danger, the driver can pop his head out for better visibility. The US Striker has similar options of using periscopes or looking out of the armored hatch cover. Overall visibility under heavy fire may be somewhat lacking in the BTR-4. The Ukrainian vehicle is quite similar in dimensions to the Russian BTR-82, though it's higher. While that presents a somewhat bigger target, it also means the troop compartment is roomier. Both vehicles share the same ground clearance. US Striker is somewhat more compact and it offers a slightly better ground clearance. BTR-4 is roomy enough to hold the same number of troops in its infantry carrier role as the Striker. Nine troops can be ferried around, though that number falls to seven when the vehicle is configured with an unmanned turret and a gunner. In BTR-82 the squad leader is also the vehicle commander. When he leaves the vehicle with the squad, the BTR-82 is left with just the driver and a gunner. A US Striker, for example, comes with a fairly large remotely operated turret in its infantry fighting vehicle variant. Unlike the BTR's 4 turret, it does not take up internal space inside the vehicle. Furthermore, due to its compact engine, the Striker can house the additional gunner crew member without losing seats for the infantry section. BTR-4 was advertised with several different gun combat system turrets. Of those, however, only the BM-7 Parus is really widely used. It's an unnamed turret with a 30mm gun, so generally speaking it is a similar system to what Striker or BTR-82A use. Though the BTR-4's bigger and boxier turret holds a lot more ready-to-fire rounds. While all three turrets boast stabilized guns and day and night sights, the sight for the Striker is a modern third-generation thermal sight, offering greater range. BTR-4's night sight is a simpler light amplification and infrared spotlight one, roughly comparable to the sight that BTR-82A is using. So far the US Striker IFV variants have not been equipped with anti-tank missiles, unlike the BTR-4, which can fairly regularly be seen with a pair of domestic barrier ATGMs. Russian BTR-82A does not use anti-tank missiles in its current form, as there is a separate variant in development for that. BTR-4, with its Parus combat module, weighs more, of course, but still maintains a better power-to-weight ratio. Additional armor for the base variant of BTR-4 is sometimes advertised and allegedly the vehicle can handle an overall weight of up to 23 tons, but as far as vehicles in actual use go, such add-on modules haven't really been used, except for simple anti-RPG cages. Still, the plentiful excess power may mean that various improvised add-on armor plates may find their way onto the vehicle in war situations. BTR-4 is advertised with a road range that falls a bit behind its Russian counterpart. Its fairly voluminous body does enable it to be amphibious, just like the BTR-82. Both are propelled by special small propulsors. The US Striker is not designed to be amphibious. BTR-4 design was adopted by Ukraine's military in 2012, but actual serial production was established only years later. As Ukraine was setting up production, skills needed to be relearned. Various vehicles had cracks in the hull discovered. Allegedly dozens of vehicles sold to Iraq were sent back due to such deficiencies. Indeed, low-quality steel was the source of arguments between the vehicle maker and Ukraine's Ministry of Defense as well. Iraq had at one point ordered over 400 BTR-4s, but after all the problems with them, they opted for Russian BTR-82s instead. Some of the Iraq-bound BTR-4s were later shipped back to Ukraine and allegedly remanufactured. Less than a dozen Iraq-bound BTR-4s were eventually sold to Nigeria, and several newly made ones were sold to Indonesia. Still, Ukraine's armed forces are the biggest user. Before the start of the war in Ukraine, they operated somewhere between 100 and 150 BTR-4s of various sub-variants. 
Currently, the production may be halted, as parts for the vehicles were made all around Ukraine, including Kharkov, which has seen mass shelling and attacks by the Russian forces. While some more advanced variants of the BTR-4, like the MV and the MV-1, were under tests, it's not looking likely that those variants will see actual serial production. Which is a shame, as the MV-1 variant further pushed the overall BTR-4 design. Its frontal section was heavily redesigned. It would have offered modular armor, with frontal arc protection against 25mm gun rounds. And the rear so-called suicide doors would have been replaced with a ramp for easier troop entry. As it stands, the whole BTR-4 may become an orphan, dependent on how the war in Ukraine actually goes. Certainly, under current war conditions, there can't really be development of new variants. When the war ends, depending on the situation, the production may be re-established. But given the losses at its production sites and the losses in know-how, any future BTR-4s or its successor variants may take years to form. BTR-4 was and is a stopgap measure for Ukraine's military, a stepping stone on the road to something better. What will happen of it remains to be seen. And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together.